Well, hello everyone and welcome to Yorkshire Gamers Monthly Update for June 2023. A steady away month for me again. Uh, I hope you've all been busy and getting some stuff painted and getting a few games in. And uh, let's have a look what we've been up to. So, last month's twerk in progress and the unit from the start of the video are these guys, 28mm Perry's Miniatures French Franco-Prussian War Artillery and these are painted up as French uh, for the Battle of Mentana, so three years before the Franco-Prussian War and uh, uniform exactly the same. Uh, and unfortunately the uniform is exactly the same as the papal artillery as well but we'll come to that very shortly uh, so I'll just take one of the units out of the way or one of the bases out of the way should I say not really a unit get some light on the matter and uh, these are the usual Perry uh, excellence that you would expect four pounder Hittite gun um, different posed uh, crew and uh, very basic uniform really with uh, all blue with red piping and the gun carriage is uh, a typical uh, dark green um, which has been weathered uh, with a bronze uh, barrel for the cannon. So I shall uh, zoom in and we'll have a quick look at the detail. So usual brilliant Perry faces, uh, very plain uh, grey uh, have a sack over the shoulder and a little bit of a twirl Anthea. My usual basin style which you'll all be familiar with by now if you watch this and then with the uh, the gun I've used a military shader wash over the dark green which is giving it a really nice weathered look uh, and then a dark tone over the bronze on the uh, gun barrel which again I really like this uh, this uh, this look uh, that you get with that wash. So uh, that's that base. I'll just bring the other one up as well. And um, chap at the front there running out. I'm kind of restricted with the base size on on these to um, fit everything on, especially with the the trail uh, spike at the end of the gun. Uh, it causes no end end of problems. Make fitting on the standard base that I've got for the guns uh, but it's come out nicely uh, and as I was saying there is this slight issue with the same uniform as the papal guns so what I've done is on the back of the French guns I've gone with a red uh, flower and uh, then I'll just reach in and get a papal gun slide that across and the papal guns have got yellow flowers on uh, so that's quite a simple and uh, hopefully elegant way of determining the two on the tabletop otherwise we'd have to get in and have a look at how i've uh, changed the motifs on the uh, belt buckles honest so well uh, that's it for the land uh, we've got a couple of things at the deep end and at the deep end we've got this ship, uh, you may recognise this as it's been through two if not three uh, twerk in progress videos and it's the Prince Eugen obviously and uh, that now completes my Battle of Denmark straight set with all four ships, the Bismarck, the Prince of Wales and of course Hood. So being on a heavy crew, being a heavy cruiser, this is a slightly smaller base than the Bismarck and uh, we've got 80 centimeters wide base sorry 80 millimeters wide base compared to the 60 for the destroyers and the 100 for the uh, capital ships and uh, we'll just have a oh, sorry kicked the chair uh, we'll just have a drive past uh, you can see I've managed to get some German symbols for this one from uh, a company in Germany would you believe we'll just have a drive past now this has been a particular pain in the backside to paint mostly because lots of uh, camo on the deck the Atlantic stripes now with the Bismarck they came as um, decals but they didn't with uh, Prince Eugen so I've kind of been stuck um, doing a lot of work on this now if I just uh, move the turrets to the side and zoom in a little bit you can see on there 
each of the individual turrets on this ship has a slightly different camo pattern um, so that's taken ages to do um, and building the ship up in stages layers if you've watched the videos make of me making these uh, ships you'll have seen how i do it building them up layer at a time so getting the baltic stripes to kind of match they're not perfect i've had to do a lot of the stuff by hand because it was too intricate to use masking uh, for me anyway uh, so but I, I'm, I'm pleased enough with it um i could have spent i've already spent three months on it so it got to the point now where it was just like get it finished get it done and uh, yeah i'm happy with the look if i look too closely i could fiddle with it for ages but i'm not going to and uh, we've got the german symbol again at the back so um i'm just spin that around and uh, have a look at the other side going past so it's uh, effectively the same camouflage scheme uh, slightly different on some of the turrets um, but very quite a busy ship lots of stuff going on on it and uh, it does look the business i'm well happy that i have finished it now and uh, that is the first part of my dem of my one seven hundredth scale ship project finished this is the denmark straight bit the four ships and uh, i'm going to do a separate video a denmark straight video to go through all the ships individually and uh, that'll be up in a few weeks time uh, but there we go there's prince eugen one seven hundredth sammy and uh, let's have a look we've done one more ship so here's the second ship i have finished this month and uh, this is another ship for the narvik game um, I've got 10 German destroyers to do for that now. Uh, this is the third one, or possibly fourth one, uh, for it. And uh, it's a 1700 trumpeter scale kit for, I think the kit is uh, Z7, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, but this is uh, Z11, which is a Burnt von Arnim. And uh, as with many of the German destroyers, this was sunk at Narvik. And there's a picture of the... Uh, the front of the ship just lying proud out of the water and you can see um, the if I can zoom in a little bit that there is a air recognition flag on the ship as sunk so there it is um, I've cut that out of a ensign flag for uh, Bismarck I think it was from the uh, decal set that I was mentioning earlier on for Prince Eugen so uh, that's on there and done very happy with that uh, i've just painted around the uh the black cross that was on the uh the rest of the flag just to give it the air recognition banner so you'll have seen these before uh the trumpeter ships very very nice detail little bit of photo etch just to finish it off and then the the turrets on this and the torpedo tubes don't move if i wanted to spend a billion years on it yes i probably could get them to do that but i need 25 30 ships for narvik so um there is a a limit to what i'm going to do with them these are war gaming pieces rather than modeling models at the end of the day uh, and i've done this one um, with the guns kind of firing off to the rear and I've also got, this is the first one I've done of a destroyer like this with the torpedo tubes uh, deployed and ready to fire. So it'll look a bit daft if it's sat in the harbour at Narvik, but during the course of the battle, uh, it'll look the business. And I do particularly like this uh, kind of in-action shot. So I'll take the camera down to uh, ground level and get a little bit more detail for you. So here we have the uh, the main bit of the sh or sort of a, a more detailed look at the ship. You can see there the the waves and the uh, the foam effect that I've done, uh, which I'm a big fan of. Very quite subtle weathering on this one um, with that sort of horizontal bar down the front. It's quite difficult to get consistent weathering down the side because everything catches on that particular thing. Sorry for the slight. Uh, camera model this is all done by hand really like that look there with those torpedo tubes out and uh, all the guns bearing on a single target so 
well happy with that so that's Z11 Here we are with this month's twerk in progress and uh, I've finally managed to get going on my 28mm Franco-Prussian stroke Risorgimento French uh, battalions. I've got four units of uh, foot infantry to do. I've already done the Chasseur up here, if you've probably seen those. And uh, just started on these quite literally. I've got one figure finished. I always do a test figure every time I do a new unit just to get myself happy with the order I'm going to do the colours in because I will paint messy to detail so I can use a lot of messy techniques like dry brushing, washes etc on things that I don't mind going over a bit of detail on other parts of the uniform makes painting a lot quicker and then when I'm absolutely don't want to make a mistake like faces, hands, weapons etc that's when I go to the detail work. So uh, that's how I do it. Uh, if you've seen any of my tutorials, there's lots of them on the YouTube, give you an idea of how I paint. So um, we'll uh, take one in progress and uh, the finished one out. And uh, I'll do a bit of zooming in. So here's the uh, half, well, the, not even half painted. Uh, all I've done on this is the blue. So I've done the blue I've used a couple of layers of uh, dry brushing on that just to bring a bit of detail out on it. And then if you can see there, I've also done the red and this, uh, that's, I've done the, I've done the blue with a dry brush technique and I've done the red in a sort of classic uh, foundry three color uh, method. And uh, we'll build that one up and get that finished uh, very shortly. I've got a couple of weeks off, uh, so I am going to, Try and crack through these French infantry as best I can. Although I'm short of a couple of command figures uh, for a couple of battalions, so I've only I can only actually physically do two at the moment. So this is the the Finnish model. Um, it's actually quite a straightforward unit. Uh, sorry, uh, straightforward uniform. There's no piping on the sleeves, for example. Um, there's a little bit of piping on the kepi, um, and the back. Uh, there's lots of uh, stuff going on on the backpack but really all it is is a brown uh, dry brushed with a, a light wash over it just to bring all the detail out and it really does just pop without a lot of work uh, so yeah that is my one finished Franco-Prussian War French I expect to see plenty of these in next month's update Of course, it's out. Bit of a spot of uh, what I've spent this month. I keep thinking I'm not going to buy anything because I've got quite a lot of stuff in, in the stash at the moment. All the figures are in for Mentana. They need painting. And I just keep building and building and building on uh, the number of kits I've got in. And uh, who doesn't want a Tugger set? You've got to have one of them, haven't you? Even if it's just for the laugh. Uh, so uh, there's some chips there I can use in my Narvik Harbour scene when I get around to putting that on. Um, and then talking of Narvik, I've ordered the last of the German destroyers I need. Uh, so there's a Z21 trumpeter kit there. I love the trumpeter stuff, as I've said. Uh, and uh, a Z7. And that was the model that you saw earlier on. So there's um, five of the later Type 36As four type 36 is a 134 at um narvik nobody does a type 34 uh, so i might have to just use one of these and uh, pretend um, but uh, so there are another couple of those to come but they didn't have them in stock at the shop oh i do tell a lie actually because there are a couple more of that there's a couple more z7s to come that's what i'm sure of uh, so there's another z21 and another Z21. So I've got nine German ships in the house. Uh, sorry, eight German ships in the house. Two Z7s to come. And that's all the destroyers for Narvik done and dusted. And then somebody pointed uh, out on the Tinto Webnet for me, very kindly, uh, that there was a sale at the model company. Uh, so, no, sorry, the model centre on Tinternet web so I picked these up at half price uh, so 
Uh, we've got HMS Rodney, uh, or HMS Dave, as I prefer to call it. And uh, it is a beautiful model. Really looking forward to putting that together. Um, useful, obviously, for the uh, Chase the Bismarck uh, campaign that I'm going to do at some stage in the future uh, and then having got Prince of Wales I had to pick up uh, HMS Repulse it is one of the most beautiful looking ships it's absolutely gorgeous uh, sadly sunk by the Japanese but uh, for me it's uh, it's a hero of World War One and World War Two. so that's all I've bought this month um, more ships for the stash um, but once I get cracking on the ships, they do fly out. Uh, so look forward to seeing these done in a while. The battleships, I've got no plans to immediately do those as I want to crack on. Now I've finished Denmark straight with the convoy and the Narvik uh, ships. So they will be what you'll be seeing next. So it's time for scores on the doors. No uh, wargaming again this month due to work. Uh, I haven't been to the club now for, I think it's six weeks due to work. Oh, retirement, please come soon. So, um, Facebook up 33, just nearly, nearly at uh, 1974. That's the, uh, that's nearly at 2000. That's the Yorkshire Gamer, uh, sorry, the Yorkshire Gamer facebook page rather than the group uh, so if you haven't already give us a follow I'm, I'm one of these people who doesn't like odd numbers so uh if we could get to 2000 that would be awesome twitter's slowly slowly i haven't done much on social media this month so i kind of expected um some ups and downs uh so just uh, another seven people all lovely and welcome welcome on board uh instagram down one Oh my God, let me get my sword out and commit hirikiri. Um, I haven't posted much on there. And Insta is a strange place where I gained a massive amount of followers very, very quickly. So uh, we're kind of evening out there, I, I think. Uh, YouTube's 1936. Desperate to try and push that up to 2000. So again, give us a follow. Uh, really appreciate it to get it up to 2000. Podcast, that's nearly at 300. Two more people. Um, and uh, I've just put one out, uh, as I'll go through in a minute, with uh, Pete Berry from Bacchus, and uh, there's more coming up, uh, booked up now till uh, 2024, uh, so which is pretty good. Uh, Facebook group up 26 to 1461. Again, I've not been posting much in there, but that's for you guys as well. If you're not already on there, get on there, post pictures of your big games, post game pictures of your little games, of your stuff in progress. Really friendly bunch of guys on there uh, and there's great pictures that appear all the time and it's not just my stuff and I don't want it to just be my stuff. Uh, get down there and put your stuff on. And finally, the podcast downloads, we're now on 83,047 and that's 3,371 uh, downloads this month, which is absolutely superb. As always, thank you very much for, to everyone who follows, you, follows Yorkshire Gamer, wherever you do it and uh, everything's for free so give me a like give me a follow give me a review uh, and consider that your payment and uh, you're all very very welcome so uh, that just leaves me to move on to the channel shout out and a quick review of what's going on elsewhere in Yorkshire Gamer this month's shout out goes to Studio Blue Ocean uh, a fantastic modelling channel um, that does mostly naval and maritime stuff. Absolutely superb. Proper modelling stuff, uh, way above the stuff that I do for my wargaming models. But there is a lot of really good ideas in here when it comes to things like shell splashes, modelling sea, etc. And uh, well worth a visit just to awe at what there is. For the podcast, um, out on YouTube now as well as Podbean, a fantastic chat with Paul Thompson from Early War Miniatures. Really engaging guys, Paul. Fantastic range of miniatures. Loads of really great stories about driving tanks with the Perrys and um, doing cartwheels in full suits of armour and German attacks on the Isle of Wight in 1943, mm -hmm. would you believe? Well worth a listen if you've not already. 
And then on uh, Podbean, the latest episode with Pete Berry from Backer 6 Mill is out. And uh, that's only available on audio. It should be on uh, YouTube next Friday. Uh, fantastic chat again with Pete. Pete is a lovely guy. And although we come at the hobby from opposite ends of the scale uh, tree, if you like, um, Pete is uh, very enthusiastic about his wargaming. And another cracking lesson. So Bob over now. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, another month done and dusted, and uh, this will come out on the last day of June, so we're straight into July. Uh, so um, hopefully get a lot more done next month. Uh, as I say, I've got uh, a couple of weeks off now, and I'm going to try and rock through some ships and some 28mm Franco-Prussian War French. And uh, I've got a couple of non-war gaming modelling projects on the go at the moment as well, which are kind of taking up hobby time and work has been extremely busy so the hobby time has just been fairly minimal but i hope you've enjoyed this update and as usual i'll see you next month see you